Andres Gujarat. Sir, the finance minister deserves full praise for transforming India's economy within a period of three years to the fastest growing economy in the world today. Sir, an economy, an economy which had been totally derailed by them thanks to various scams and scams that took place during the regime. Sir, by enforcing strict fiscal discipline, he has sent a very positive message to the international investors and you can see FDI thronging to India to make in India. Sir, this discipline has also resulted in lower pressure on the banks because the government borrowings have gone down and this has given breathing space to the private sector to borrow and to grow. Sir, you can see the effects of this policy by a stronger dollar, by a stronger rupee against the dollar, lower CAD and high foreign exchange reserves. Sir, by boosting investments in the infrastructure and agriculture sector, he has given a kick start to the economy, which would get a further boost now with this budget. Sir, I just wish to draw the attention of the Honorable Finance Minister to a few suggestions, which are bothering me also, like some other members of this House. <coughs> Amendments to Section 132 and 132A, which state that reason to believe or reason to suspect will not be disclosed to any authority. Sir, this is causing concern because the hallmark of this government has been transparency and accountability. So I'm a little perplexed that why are they bringing in something like this, which will in fact empower the junior officers of the income tax and disempower the senior officers who are the CITs and who sit in the tribunals. So, no, Sorry? Please. So I do hope, sir, that they would relook at this because this has, cons by and large, the, the assessees feel that now the income tax officer, the department which was always considered, uh, I would say, uh, a bit too strong in using strong arm tactics, will now have more to bother the assessees. Sir, in this very house, the finance minister a few days ago said that he wants to make the tax regime user-friendly and both non-adversarial. Sir, in this country, only 1.5 lakh people declare incomes of over 50 lakhs and only 20,000 declare income of over 1 crore. Now, the finance minister said that scrutiny cases would be restricted to 1%. My question is, how many of these high net worth individuals are scrutinized? Because what happens is, here the scrutiny rate goes, goes up to 30%, 40%, 50%, and that is where the corruption starts. So I hope you will also take care of that. Sir, I am not saying that don't take action against the tax offenders, but please make sure that you don't throw the, throw, throw the baby out with the bath water. Sir, a few things regarding my state I would like to highlight. When it comes to procurement, the, recently there was a question asked in this house, and in that answer, the minister has stated that cost of production of wheat is 797 and the MSP is 1625, gram 2241, MSP 4000 and mustard 1871 and 3700. Sir, if these figures were to be correct, there would be no farmer suicides. So I am certain that this is wrong. And if this is right, then why don't you follow the Swaminathan formula which you have already committed? So I would urge you that please take care of the farmer and till such time that you can implement the Swaminathan formula, for God's sake, raise the MSP by at least 2% higher than the inflation rate. The farmer must get some uh, relief from you. 
sir another question is procurement that the government does from the states like punjab haryana and up plus other states as well sir i think the contract that they have signed with the state governments needs to be revisited i will give you the example of punjab recently the union cabinet has settled the state of punjab with a debt of 31000 crores now sir what they have said is that this is to take care of the historical problems the fact of the matter is the punjab agencies were procuring wheat on behalf of the center they procure this wheat and they keep it in their godowns no insurance cover is offered if it's eaten up by rats rodents it's put in the open plains many a times for years whatever rots is the responsibility of the punjab government when it is transported from the mandis to the warehouses the labor charges and the transport charges in punjab are much higher than what they are in let's say uh, bihar or in madhya pradesh but when we raise a supplementary bill no credits are given not only that interest rate is charged on that and compounded interest is charged on that and of this 31000 crores i think the principal amount is not even 8 or 9000 crores the rest is all interest we are asked to send wheat let's say to the southern states it takes about 5 to 6 weeks in transit punjab gets credit only the day it reaches the warehouse in the south so that interest is also loaded onto the states now i speak for my state now but this is happening to every single state but since we feed the nation we must get some relief and i would urge you i am not saying write it off the, the least you can do is appoint an arbitrate arbitrator yeah. they can look at what we our claims are they can look at your claims and then settle but don't although we are no longer in power in punjab but i do say that it is unfair for the new government to be bearing the brunt of this 31000 crore sir one more issue is i welcome their, their new textile policy which has also covered the leather goods industry and this will create almost a crore of jobs because they are giving liberal incentives for modernization but what they have done is that they have limited the incentive to 50 crores and companies which are already in existence who have already taken up to 50 crores are not eligible anymore sir your intention is to create jobs i would urge you please link it with new fresh employment generation because what is happening is we are we have a growth in this country but it's a jobless growth when you do this you will this will lead to automation but when you link it to job creation lakhs of indians will benefit so i hope you will also take care of this suggestion sir i don't want to take long i i would in the end again compliment the, the finance minister especially today when gst is being debated in the other house which is going to be a game changer for india and this is a historic piece of legislation which only thanks to his patience his 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 sagacity his his diplomacy i think he has managed to carry all the states along and i compliment him for that okay. thank you very much sir thank you mr <coughs> naresh kudralji thank you very much